Chuck Fresh. And this is Computer Care Clinic's tip of the day. Probably one of the oldest battles in the computer industry. Whether you should shut down your computer at night or just let it go into a sleeper hibernating mode. People have asked us this for 12 years now. And I've looked up and talked to several engineers and energy consultants. And no one can seem to agree on what's best for a computer and what's best for your pocketbook. I've decided to do a little bit of research on my own. I was really surprised at what I found. And what I found is not a lot of real good, solid information. It's really hard to find a good black and white uh, answer to this question. So I'm going to explain the three phases of uh, computing. There's actually four, four power phases of computing. Number one, it's on. It's powered on. You're using it. You're typing it. You're surfing the Internet. You're playing games. You're doing whatever you do on a computer. Number two is off where you can't do anything. The thing's powered off and you type all you want and move your mouse and it's not going to do a darn thing and your screen will be black. Number three is a low power mode known as sleep where it saves your session. It actually physically requires a little bit of power. Not much. We're talking about 0.5 watts. I mean, a negligible amount of power to store your session on RAM. It's called volatile memory, meaning if you take the power away from it, it will erase your session. And, and the fourth one is hibernate. And that's where your computer actually physically saves the entire session, everything you're working on, the web pages, your Word documents, uh, your emails, everything you were doing, it saves that session just as it was when you were last working on it to the hard drive as a little file. And it can be a pretty comprehensive file, sometimes a couple of gigs, so you really need a good amount of space on your hard drive to store it. And then it just throws it in there and then uh, shuts down your computer and puts it into a, an even sleepier mode where it doesn't need to save that information on your RAM. So that when you wake it up out of the hibernate, uh, it'll put you right back where you were, just as sleep will. But if you do lose power due to a power outage or you unplug the computer inadvertently, the hibernate files will still be there. Sleep files will not. There is something else called hybrid sleep, which actually does both sleep and hibernate. So it stores your session onto RAM and also stores it into a clever little hibernate file. So in the event you do lose power, it'll... Uh, it'll default over to the Hibernate files and bring you back where you were, and you shouldn't lose any data. The Hibernate uh, file should technically last forever. I mean, if you don't come back to that computer for five years and uh, the hard drive is still working and the motherboard's all still good, you plug it in, it should bring you back to that Hibernate station no matter how long you it's been since you used that computer. So, so those are the power stages. Now, energy usage, consumption-wise, it really depends on your unit. If you're using one of these big giant gaming machines or something that's pretty old, you could use as much as 60 to 100 watts or even more, depending how many fans you have and what kind of video cards and how many of those you have. So you could use a tremendous amount of energy while the computer is on. And that's why I recommend that people don't leave their computers in a full power stage overnight. They, leave, they make a lot of noise. They suck a lot of power. They actually generate heat, which is terrible in the summertime because it can increase their, the temperature in your room by 10 degrees in a small room or even more. Also, there's wear and tear on the components. Uh, the hard drive is going to keep spinning and the bearings in all your fans are going to keep spinning. So if you leave it on all the time, if you don't need to do that, it's probably not a great idea. It's going to use a lot of power, add a little bit more wear and tear on the components. And uh, depending on who you are and what you do, you may not want that. Now, some people do need to leave it on because their computers do certain things at night. They may parse databases. They may act as a server for other computers in the house that need that computer to be constantly on. Either you have people in remote locations or people in the other end of the house that pull movies or something off of that. Uh, it's, it's not a so, super efficient way to do things, but a lot of people do that sort of thing. And one computer can act as a media server that stores all your music and all your movies and everybody else pulls all that information off that one computer in your house. Or if you run a business, you're more likely to have maybe you have employees in the field that need to access database or client information on that computer. So sometimes computers need to stay on. Another reason they need to stay on overnight, but not every night, is your computer may, you may not want it to do updates during the day when you're actually using it because it could interrupt your work workflow if it needs to restart. And some of these updates can take upwards of an hour if it's a complex or a, a major operating system up, update. So you don't want that to happen during the day. Also, a lot of people set their virus and malware scans to happen in the middle of the night. But you don't need to do this every night. I recommend people do it about once a week. And that requires full power for the computer to go through the entire virus and malware scan to make sure you don't have any junk on your computer. And then there's defragmentation, which happens automatically when you're not using the computer, when you're 
uh, when it detects that you're idle. So all that happens automatically. No, you don't need to do that anymore. So, and also well, there's one more thing too, the backup. The backup process, depending on how much you need to backup, if you're using an online service like Carbonite and it's your backup for the first time, well, that computer should probably be on for a good couple of weeks straight because the upload speed is one-tenth the speed of your download in typical home environments. In some business environments, they're equal, but it costs a lot more money to do that. So typically, it's one-third. Uh, if you have 30 megabits down, count on about two to three megabits up. And it, depending on how much you have on that hard drive, you've got like years of photos and pictures and videos and uh, music. It's going to take a couple of weeks to complete that backup on a Carbonite type service, Carbonite Mosey or one of the other ones. So that synchronization could take a while. And yes, in that event, you'd want your computer to stay on. But once that backup's done, the incrementals are much smaller, and then you can let it go back into sleep because it'll back up while you're using the computer because the backups will be much smaller and take a lot less time. So that's the only other uh, reason you'd want to leave it on continually. Otherwise, if you're an energy conserving person in other ways, if you drive a Prius and you turn all your lights off, you don't even use lights in your house, maybe you use candles, then yes, you'd want to put your computer into either the off mode or a, a sleep or hibernate position to save a whole bunch of money and energy and hopefully the environment too. So. So let's look at uh, some of the advice we found on the internet. This is kind of comical. We looked at the real simple website, and apparently they are simpletons, and they really don't know what they're talking about. So this woman uh, named Julia Edelstein uh, wrote something here. She's like, turn it down, turn it off. She says, uh, well, she doesn't know really what she's talking about. But uh, that's what uh, Real Simple says. She goes, uh, something about... She asked somebody in some computing technology industry association, which I have no idea what that is, but it says gives your hard drive time to cool off. What she doesn't realize is when it goes into sleep and hibernate that your hard drive is cooling off because it's not really working. It's not really spinning. So sleep mode is adequate as turning it off. So she's a little confused. Let's look at Kim Commando, the digital goddess. And uh, what does she say? She says uh, she's along the uh, lines. She doesn't really answer it. But uh, I think she's leaning towards turning it off at night. But I severely question her advice at times, too. So I don't pay a whole lot of mind to her. I think I'm smarter than her anyway. And then uh, I went to Scientific American, but this is back from 2007. Hardware was vastly different than it is today. And uh, what they say here is uh, that you should turn it off. And there is some ill information here. And, hey, Scientific American, you need an update on this particular article. So uh, it's about nine years old. So let's take a look at that, guys. So I went to the, uh, the government, which hopefully had the best information of all. And they uh, actually explain things here. And they said, turn off the monitor if you aren't going to use it for more than 20 minutes. And turn off your computer if you're not going to use it for two hours. So they were surprisingly aloof also. But what's important to understand is they have this Energy Star mandate that they actually tell electronics manufacturers to install in all new computers. And what that is, is it's a default setting on all your laptops and desktops that tell it to go to sleep, including your monitors, too, after a certain amount of time where it detects that you're not using it. You're not sitting in it. You're not looking at it. You're not moving a mouse or a keyboard. And it will automatically throw your computer or electronic device into some sort of sleep mode. So that already happens automatically. So them telling you to shut it off after 20 minutes is a little wacky. But uh, you can read all this for yourself at energy.gov. So Microsoft has some information here. And uh, they actually have a, a pretty uh, thorough website, which explains the difference between sleep hibernation and the hybrid sleep, too. So take a look at that at Microsoft.com. It'll tell you how to go through your uh, settings and make some changes here. And then, uh, of course, uh, Microsoft has a video, too. It shows you how to shut down or hibernate your PC. Uh, what they didn't they didn't really were too forthcoming about is the uh, settings there are advanced power settings if you go into your system menu I'm using Windows 10 obviously and you go to system and then power and sleep and then you click down here you'll see the default settings here I've got mine when I'm plugged in my screen's gonna turn off after uh, 15 minutes so and when I'm plugged in my PC goes to sleep never now I've got a laptop and it does go to sleep when I close the lid so if I, during the day, I don't want it to go to sleep because I need to get the things relatively quickly. I need to answer emails and uh, reply to comments and all kinds of fun stuff. 
So you'll see a nifty little option here called additional power settings. If you click that, you can get into things that you can't normally see. And uh, again, if you're, this looks familiar, it's the same exact interface you've seen in Windows 7 and Windows Vista. So you go to uh, change plan settings. I choose high performance. Again, we do a lot of editing and all kinds of weird things here. And then you'll get to this page and then you want to go to, well, again, you probably shouldn't be poking around here, but you'll see this dialogue that really opens up what you can control in terms of power. You can set sleep options here. You can set your hybrid sleep. Since I'm a laptop, I really don't need hybrid sleep because it has a battery installed. But if it were a desktop, you might be interested in doing hybrid sleep. And then you can tell it to hibernate after this, that, and the other thing, and allow wake timers. A lot of people who have their computers turned on in the middle of the night for whatever reason may have a wake timer installed, and they don't even know it. So I make sure mine are disabled. So uh, it'll give you some options here in terms of turning off the hard disk and also what the lid does when you close the lid. When I close my lid, I want it to go to sleep. And you can change this to different things here. You can have it hibernate, shut down, or do nothing at all. If you have it in a docking station, you want it to do nothing at all when you close the lid. And this is where you would change that. Also, you've got some power processor management. A lot of people who have HPs have some problem with their power processor management, with their processor just going to this weird low power state even when it's plugged in. Well, here's where you can change that. You can do the minimum processor state, and you can tell it uh, to be whatever percentage you want, plugged in or on battery. I put mine in 100%. I think on battery, mine was down to like 5%. So I changed that because I want my processor to... Uh, I've got an i7, and I want to use the full functionality, whether I'm in battery or plugged in. I'm typically plugged in most of the time, and that doesn't harm a laptop at all, as we've talked about before. But uh, here's where you can change all those settings in terms of... Uh, uh, processor state. Also, you have cooling policy too, where uh, you can uh, have the fan come on more often than not. If you're in a in, in a situation where you'd want it to be a little bit more quiet, you might want it to be passive. But uh, this is where you can change all that stuff too. Um, you do a little bit of research on the internet to find out what these things actually do, and also what your manufacturer's rec recommending settings are. You know, before you change these things, again, you could end up in some uh, in some trouble, but nothing really you can break here. So try them out and see what they do for you. And also, again, check with your um, your, uh, your your manufacturer's recommended setting to see what's what. All right, so that's the uh, power thing. Hope we've answered some of your questions. If you have, if you're an engineer, by all means, leave us some information in the comments below. We'd love to hear from you. And if you have any personal experience with this, or if you work for the power company or the government, we'd love to have your input also. My name is Chuck Fresh with Computer Care Clinic, and this is your tip of the day.